That bloke on screen, what a first year he's had. Sydney stack, but up against the bloke, if you judge the ball a little bit wrong, you might take a hanger and sit on your shoulders. Ready to go. MCG Friday night, round 19, Collingwood and Richmond. Umpire Andrew Stevens, Matthew Nichols, and Jacob Mollison get it underway here at the G. Immediately, the star of the comp and a free kick will go the way of Mason Cox. So Cox a little, had a little bit of jumper there, I think, Ashman. Duck, that's what you were talking about. The forwards getting front position. The ball just kicked off the ground, hacked in, and the big bodies just might cause the defender to panic, though there wasn't a heap in that one. Well, as, a, fo the arm, I think yeah, as a forward, I mean, the ball's not that wet at the moment, but as a forward, the ball often obviously drops on you, so it's important to be in full. Still, in a, still a dry ball, hasn't had time to get wet, should be able to kick at the journey. Mason Cox, not a long kick, he's straight that left. Has, didn't kick a goal last week. Mason Cox, first shot tonight for the Magpies. So, been raining for those watching around the country for about the last hour or so, and it'll be intermittent Jamie, throughout the, the night. Short, missed out on that grand final last year. Fine player, he... Keeps it low down the line and chuggle, not taken by Howe. Holding, Collingwood. Phillips, just a consistent player, a really high quality, consistent player. Adding depth to in midfield, kicks in the Cox direction again. Trelaw got a bit on it, that's a pretty good shot. It's a goal. Oh, that is a big start for the Pies. And it's quite ironic, because that's the one thing you, that you'd love him to do a little bit more of. He does everything else pretty well, doesn't he? No-one's had more of the ball this season than this man here. You're right, Bruce. If he adds that to his game on a more regular basis, he puts himself up to that absolute elite bracket of midfielders. He's very good at what he does, but goal-kicking adds that. It's coming out this way. Well, we talked about being clean. Have a look at this for a pick-up. That's exactly where you want to be, front and square. Lingy, no fumble. If he slightly fumbles that, he gets tackled. Clean Nine. and very nice finish. Ninth goal for the year for Adam Trelaw. Just his fifth since round three, though. Out of the middle, Mark. Handball. Prestia been in good touch. It's 30-plus oh. over the last four weeks. Yeah, what a season he's had, yeah. BT. Just, just understands his teammates, his role even better now that he's been at the club for quite a while. Brilliant year. Plays his role brilliantly. You're right, Lingy. There's Soldo right. caught with a footy here by Chris. You saw Dusty Martin just in that passage before that. I mean, he was clean. Prestia not clean. I mean, a big difference between one grab. Cochin there. Over the shoulder, Cochin. Here's Mark running onto his not preferred. A lot of not preferred kicking going on the moment. Good mark in the conditions. Okay. Tom Elliott. Played half back last week and looks like he's starting at that end of the ground again this week. He is the ultimate utility. We know he's a goal kicking, but he could play half back wing, half forward, could play full forward. He's tall enough. That kick to Cox got over the back. Hooley, 200th game tonight. What a wonderful player he's been at Richmond. Started with the Bombers, of course. Does the one two with Vloston. Vloston then decides to kick and gain some territory. Territory is going to be all important tonight. Prestia, just that little fumble. Short gets it back. Ellis, clever. Hooley has Martin decided to go back. Yeah. He's good with ball in hand normally, Hooley. He decides to go with a high ball. Where's Lynch? Grundy got back. Collingwood had plenty of numbers there. Bouncing ball. Ellis released it. Martin's in heavy traffic. Oh, clever to Bolton in the pocket. And, Dark, you just mentioned about Mark being really clean in the different conditions. What an example that is. Yeah, another example. He, he hasn't fumbled once. Prestia fumbled a couple of times. Okay, every, every time he's touched it, three times tonight, Mark, they've all been as clean as a whistle. In really trying circumstances. Yeah, always found that, Duck. The really good players just play better in the wet. Yeah. They don't come back to the pack. They almost elevate themselves because they are so clean. And this guy is one of those, Lingy. Cox... Contested. Open forward in. No Collingwood player inside 50 at the moment. 
Now side bottom, he's got to delay his attack as a result of no one really being in a good position forward to go in. No, Dylan Grimes is playing that almost goalkeeper role. Just making sure they couldn't go quick. Pendlebury now with a high ball. Here's Cox again. Got the initial jump on his opponent there in Broad. Floston had trouble controlling it. Bashes underneath here. Tries to extract it. Good tackle by Elliott back into the side for the Pies. That was a great play from Collingwood from that kick out. They went the length of the ground with Richmond not touching it. And in these conditions, that's a very good passage of play. Grundy, you think he's going to be strong in these areas? Holding. Holding. And he is strong in these areas. Yeah, I reckon look for him in forward 50 to try and take the ball out of the ruck and either throw it on the boot himself or give off the handball. And on this occasion, I think Soldo just panicked and realised Grundy had outpositioned him. And three, trapped him. three big free kicks in his first term. First one to Cox. I think it was Phillips out here that sent that one inside that got the first goal and, and that one. So, Gee, this would be telling Duck if he can goal from here. And he's capable. It's tightish. Get a great view, don't you? And never gave it a chance, so I missed there. Gee, Cox, we talk so much about Cox. He's been part of this match, hasn't he? Yep. <laughs> it's early, I know. Foster. Long ball, rewalk. Holding. Allowing it to Holding go Holding Richmond, flag and a jumper. Professionally done by Jack Rewalk. Umpire Matty Nichols right on the spot. Rewalt to half forward, high footy. Tried to punch on there, Lynch got a little five metres or so over the back. Phillips again, got it to rough head. He was backed into the pocket and immediately Howe says the boundary line is my friend. Apart from those couple of handballs there by Collingwood in that close in passage as the ball went out of bounds, it's been all kicking for Collingwood. 15 kicks, three handballs to start this game. So they are still wanting to try and maintain that possession despite the conditions and sometimes just prepared to throw it on the boot as well. Martin and Penderbury, what a match up there. Cochin, opportunity, here he is, running loose, gets within range, Dusty gets the first for the Pies! Electric stuff from the number four. She ducks all over him, isn't he, uh, BT? He's yeah. all over Dusty. We, we, we mentioned... And, and we will all night because, I mean, that, that passage of play, you mentioned Collingwood kicking it. Well, that's just beautiful chain of handball. I mean, sometimes in the modern game, that, that one of those handballs misses in dry weather. So that was beautiful footy and what a finish. And Champion Data put that stat out this week about how they handle forward. They gain so much British going forward. The contrast in styles here, Duck. Handball, 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 and then get the man that you want kicking the footy in some space with some time, and he was never going to miss. How often do we see in a dry weather game one of those handballs miss? I mean, that was superb footy, and uh, in slippery conditions, that was a beautiful finish from Mark. So a quick response from the Tigers, and then Soldo got some good meterage forward. Castagna's been in great form in the last month, as has his team, and he holds Sharon Berg out. Sharon Berg back in the team. He's had such a spluttering career. He's such a talent. It's been hard to watch for family and fans, but he's sticking to it. Martin again doing the right thing. Side bottom, talk about clean. That was clean, coming out of the back half. And then on purpose, he mungles the ball along the line. No free kick to the pies. Back to Edwards. Back to Stack. Back in board to Vlosten. Lynch did very, very well. Castagna couldn't quite release it. He had Martin out the back. Goes a high ball. Collingwood got the numbers here. Elliott was there. Cox was trying to work it on. Richmond work it out the back door. Floston it was. Got the little handball. Now an opportunity for Richmond to tidy it up. Baker the initial one. Look at the loose player out the far side of the ground. If only Short can get it there. He does. Gee, Alice was a little touchy just for the arm. Spills to side bottom. Side bottom goes deep inside 50. But just couldn't straighten the footy enough to bring his teammates into it. Ball hung in the air a while, and I think Brandon Ellis was expecting some contact there that didn't arrive. Yeah, he wouldn't be happy with himself at all there, Brandon Ellis, because he takes that. Richmond have got the open side of the ground, away they go, instead giving Collingwood another chance. Grundy won it clearly. Elliot hasn't kicked a goal since about round seven. He hasn't played that many matches. Vlosten was good, so was Lambert. 
Broad's kick, didn't get it out that far. A main clever, crisp on the left foot. Grundy, it was a hard one. Flostam was very good. He ran the gauntlet, got it away. And Lambert pumps it hard and long. Lynch made the contest. Maynard had to concede, just overran it. Stack ball bouncing and bubbling about, and Quainor runs it over. Short's fumble exposed Ellis a little bit, didn't it? But, and then Ellis would have been disappointed, obviously. Absolutely. See there, we expect to see that a bit tonight, don't we, Doug? Dusty has his run in the middle of the ground, has a huge impact, and then rests forward where he's going to be such a threat. Deep forward. Soldo, Grundy locked up the front position. Brought the ball to the front of the pack, as expected. Light rain still falling here at the G. Gee, it's a hot, Richo, you're down there at ground level. It's a high intensity at the moment, high pace. Yeah, it is, uh, BT, and there's absolutely no breeze down here tonight. Main, high footy. Wow. Well done, Majek. Side bottom been impressive so far in this game. That not so. He's had a good year. He hasn't had the great year that he had last year. He's been good. He's always good, isn't he? He's always such a threat with ball in hand, either to set a teammate up or to kick goals. Short, pumps it very long. It's a good kick. And he was able to spread it to Edwards, coming up to 250, very close in his career. So that long-ranging kick, Revolt positioned himself. Howe was excellent. Pendlebury had to be a little expansive. Scharenberg up for it. Chris, with those strong hips of his, did well to Phillips on the wing. How many people in BT? Is it hard with the ponchos for you to count? Well, they're also <laughs> tightly tucked under the uh, under the decking here, Bruce. It's hard to see, but I reckon in excess of 70 at the moment. Have we'll a look at the ponchos there, would you? Poncho land. Oh boy, I just want to see Duck in one of those one day. That's so. where ponchos. Edwards. No. Maine. There'll be no shirt on underneath. Stack. Alice. So just a momentary quiet time here at half back. Not short. No, Lingy, even Duck would have a shirt on down here tonight, trust me. <laughs> Floston out very wide, using every inch of the G and its width. Now Cotton able to go long and deep. Lynch has got a good jump at this. Hands on it. Lambert off hands. Couldn't get it working. The inside out right foot up. But I love the way Lynch attacked a footy in the air. This may be out of bounds on the ball. So we're going to play out of bounds. I think the ball bouncing. Okay, throw it in. Throw it in. So a win here for Richmond, eh? That was a brilliant front square by Lambert, wasn't it? Yep. At speed, knew exactly where that ball was going to drop. So you can hear from the reaction that the Pie fans think it was out on the full choll doing that ruck work for rid of the first time. Rioli, Stack, I think it was meant for Lynch a bit wider, but Stack's got such an appetite for the ball, hasn't he? Short's had a lot of it early, pokes it back, revolt contest, Pendlebury important there. Main, Phillips getting right back and doing well. That's a push in the back. That's a push in the back. The ball was back so quickly, Majacek was able to find Varko further down the ground. Varko now exploring out wide and finds an opportunity with Dugowie. Dugowie slowly to the 50. Thomas, good mark, brave mark, backing back inside. Quick little ball, it'll be punched away from Brown. He's able to recover, little handball to Majacek, ran into the Asprey tackle. Asprey nails him. Good stuff from the Tigers defender in Asprey. Grundy won it comfortably. It could be a problem for Richmond. Pendlebury, side bottom trying to get on the end of it. Brown was involved. Prestia able to bang the ball out into a bit of vacant territory. Revolt, well done, Scharenberg. He is a good size, isn't he? Main to Quainor in his fourth game. Good kick to Varko. Varko now, he'll keep it low-ish. Maybe didn't keep it low enough. To go, he was the target. Vlosten runs it towards the line. He's happy with that result. So, first instincts are that Collingwood are looking a little better, certainly than they did last week. Well, they're just getting the job done around the contest, plus five in contested possession. That's helping them get the ball in their forward half. But Thomas 
from the Grundy forward knock, Phillips. Richmond is such a threat when they're able to surge the ball on and get that forward handball going. That's the worry at the moment. Hotch and cool to Castagna. Off half back. Down the line for Rewalt once again. He was outnumbered. How was the flyer? Lynch out the back if he can pick it up plenty. He goes the soccer back inside. Looking for Bolton. Finding him sort of, but Bolton's yet to pick it up and take advantage of it. Little knockout. It was well done underneath. I think it might have been Maine under all that. Baker to Castagna through heavy traffic. Cotchen was quite free in there. Eventually got caught. Grundy to Brown. It's banging around inside there. Top ball to be won. And Richmond's free. High tackle, Basher. He was brave, Basher. There, he knew what was coming. He knew he was going to be bashed, so to speak. But he stood his ground. Kicks to the hot spot. Holding. Lynch. He's such a threat, Wayne, isn't he? He is, and he's put himself in some good positions. He's attacked the footy really hard, and because he's been doing that then it puts pressure on the defender. You see what happens there? Ford's always put their arm back to That's... try and get a bit of separation. They often hold the defender's jumper, but quite often the umpire only sees the defender reacting, and that was a little bit of that there. A little bit soft, that one. Let's see if he can kick straight on the night like tonight. He does. Richmond are in front. Might have been fortunate. I've had a free. If I see that, you said before, but if I hold it, you're not going to pay for it. Yeah, that one, I saw a clear arm hold. Okay. I've got, I've got to say, I saw a clear arm hold there as well. I thought he had every piece of his arm. Restricted his initial movement. It was early in him running for the footy. Well, you mentioned, Wayne, that he could have a run at the Coleman. Cameron made life hard for him last week, but he is. He's kicked 12 in the last four weeks coming in. He has, and I reckon there's a few bags in him. Tonight's obviously going to be difficult to kick a bag, but off to a good start. That was a nice finish. Cox into the ruck, Joel. Martin. Cox again. Side bottom. Just had to stand into the wall of traffic coming his way. Joel eventually extracts it. Does really well. Got a penetrating ball inside 50. Slipping over. Lynch again. He waits for someone. Really great presence of mind at Bolton around the corner. And they've got three in a row, the Tigers. Wow. Lynch slung in the tackle. Could have been excused for getting rid of it earlier. But his composure to find someone with the footy was great. Yeah, it was the pickup, BT. Earlier in the year, he wasn't picking that ball up in dry weather. He, his body didn't allow him to. He looked like he was turning like the Queen Mary. He didn't have that agility, but that's just a very, very clean pickup. Have a look at the pickup here from Lynch. Earlier in the year, he couldn't do that in dry weather, let alone in conditions like tonight. That shows you where his body's at, and then the composure to give off a clean handball. He'd That's had why he's coming home with a wet sail. Had a compromised pre-season, hadn't he? I mean, yep. he, so he's made a really impressive start to tonight, and so have the Tigers. Cotchin after Collingwood made the very early running. Bolton had just kicked the touch, goal. Play on, Mine, heard, touch, play heard, on. Heard touch, the call. Play on. Heard the calls from the umpires. They relayed it down. Topo from Revolt important. Uh, Quainall went to ground and he's monstered, and a stoppage. And she Collingwood have got to be careful in the next five minutes here. This game can run away from you in a hurry. Look at those clearances. That's where the game is right now. Here's one now. Crisp. Underneath that, Joel there. Thomas, little poker, didn't clear the pack though. Graham through traffic. Gave the little handball out here to Law. Around the corner, had to dispose of it quickly. Meyer check up over the top. Couldn't reel it in, difficult circumstances. Asprey, was it deliberate? Just have a look at this. Talk about the clearances here. Collingwood just clearly not on the same page there. Mason Cox easily getting his hand on that one, but straight down the throat of Cochin. Got to be better communication. Make the most of those easy chances in the middle of the ground with the stoppages. Well, he takes that one out of there, Lingy, and then makes a bit of a, a meal of it, doesn't he? But 
but does a good job there with that toe poke and Grundy world position. Couldn't quite control it. Martin again making good decisions, kicking the ball off the ground. Castagna held up by Quain or there'll be a stoppage. Even when Martin kicks it off the ground, he gets good purchase. <laughs> he started extremely well, hasn't he? Cox went early against Scholl. Chris read that well. Almost held up there by Dacos. He couldn't quite control it. Pressed here. Graham with those heavy hips. He was able to get through. Revolt. Another Lynch versus Ruffhead. Good matchup. Stack went down the ground. Again, good stuff. I think it was Lynch. Stack as he kicked it out. Now it's a behind, I think. So, Cochin, what's happening here? So, has the phone call happened or any ideas, uh, well, Richo? Uh, well, the physio went down with him, guys, okay. so I, maybe it's uh, a little issue he's having. So, for those that don't know, his wife, Jude. Yep. And he did, has said, I think, that he will leave the game if something does happen. So we'll keep an eye on that. We can't see him down in the rooms, of course, down there. Grundy slides the ball. Boundary side to Trelaw. Six and a quarter remaining here in the first quarter. Collingwood, the first goal of the game. Richmond have piled on the next three. Rain has ceased momentarily. High ball over the top, sport to ground by Broad. Picked up here by the Tigers, Lambert. Martin squeezed the trigger with the handball out to Baker. Baker goes direct and straight for home down the middle. Main's got a job to do here on stack. Goes to ground. Now he leaves Roughhead standing. Two on one the Tigers' way. Rewalt and Roughhead. Gee, Roughhead did well. Handball missed the target. Edwards, a little tizzler back inside. Castagna, Lynch there as well. Now, was it deliberate? Sharon Bird knocked it out, I think it is. Free kick Tigers, and it will be Lynch within range. And I think a correct call from the umpire. So Tom Lynch kicked the last goal. Rain has just eased a little bit here now. There's the task ahead, a tough one for Lynch, gives it a chance, puts it out the front, high ball, rough head makes sure. There's no more footy with that one. Press the staff for Lynch. Both coaches mentioned territory battle early on in this game. Well, Richmond have got it at the moment. 12 inside 50s to 6. But here's a chance for Collingwood to get something going. Cox was good there, wasn't he? Just did the right thing. Got the ball down. Wasn't able to take the contested mark. And down the line. Good thinking. Yeah, brilliant. But Richmond had set up so well. Once they'd won that footy... Collingwood had nowhere to go, and that's why they had to slow the play up. So Grundy now doing that ruck work. Soldo, Grundy, Soldo won it. Martin, Phillips, Main, Trelaw, Thomas, clever, neat kick, hard one for the goey. He was at full pace on a light low tonight with a quality opposition right in his back pocket. Well, that kick, when you're kicking door forward in these conditions, you're never going to mark that footy coming at that pace. That has The speed has to come off the ball so you can run onto it. So just a little bit more up and down in the footy then, Duck. Holding yep. Collingwood. Brody Grundy. So I would say just out of range here in these conditions for Grundy. He plays on, though. Doesn't waste any time. Sneaks a couple of extra metre. High ball to the square. Cox at the back. Couldn't mark it. Sliding down low. On that occasion, it was Crocker. He's replaced Adams in the selected side here tonight. Now he's mauled by Broad. Did he have prior? Umpire said yes, and the fans don't necessarily agree. To the nine metres. Did they miss a chance there, Collingwood? We're able to get into a pretty good position in that 10 metre square. Hoskin Elliott. Smother came from Revolt. Cochin is back up on the bench now. Thanks, Richo. So, maybe something just a bit tight rather than. He has had the hamstring uh, issues this year, Bruce, don't forget. Let's hope yep. it's not that. So, Martin having a big opening turn. She could pick up by Hoskin Elliott like a dry day, wasn't it? Side bottom. It's a strange kick from side bottom. You don't normally see him do that. That's a massive turnover. But Vlosten asked a fair bit of Graham. 
because he got the pace, but he did enough, he got it around. Stack may get it from Lynch again. Lynch got down. Stack to Bolton. Bolton for goal. He had Castagna running past. He decided to go himself and just misses. Well, I've already seen the advantage of playing in front as a forward. The opportunity to get those balls off the ground and give a handball on the up to players at a front and square. And you can be confident that ball's going to skid on in a straight line, exactly. get your body behind it, yep. take it with you. Rough head. Soldo, Talor, keeps it moving forward to Goey. Took the pump that it was going to beat on that occasion. Grimes, and it did not. Now Edwards. The Tigers, again, find space out wide. Rewalt, beats out of the footy. Now he's got to get around him. He does with a beautiful left foot keep. A deep ball in front is Lynch. Punched away Grundy. Beautiful front and centre by Pendlebury. Gave it to Hoskin Elliott. It was immediately under the pump. Phillips slipped over. Didn't take the footy with him. Umpire calls play on. Collingwood surrounding the footy, but it didn't go anywhere near them. Stack got it out to Hooley. Hooley gathers after an initial fumble. Got it off to Prestia. Prestia with a kick around the body. It's play on. Touch ball. Maynard. Quick hands. They're pressed up against the ropes at the moment, the Pies, aren't they? And they're really having to absorb. Got to hang on here. 74, 75 in the house at the moment, I reckon, Bruce. Well, that's a great, great response. Car park's closed, I guess, and all of that. Pressed here, goes back in board. Castagna. Chol. Collingwood got the numbers. That ball nearly out, and now it is. So around about that 75,000 mark. Collingwood were the best first quarter team in the comp until about six or seven weeks ago, and Richmond since then have been just interesting. Cochin hasn't come back onto the ground though since he came up to the bench, guys. Thanks, Matthew. So some mystery surrounding. Holding Richmond. These gee, they're red hot on these ruck contests tonight. I reckon that's the fourth free kick out of a ruck contest already. It feels Richo like a bit of a directive during the week to focus in on that. Uh, undoubtedly, I mean, there's not there's not much in these, and I mean, Soldo even had Grundy's jumper yeah, there. Both players had the jumper. That's play on. Yeah, absolutely, it is. They both had a piece of each other. Yeah. And Soldo should kick a goal from that decision, and he does. Oh, that's a big penalty for the Pies. Not sure you'd want Soldo having a shot after the siren, Bruce, after that set shot. No, it was... Uh, <laughs> went about... It was different, Duck. Went about 18 metres, I reckon. It was the low ball. A little chip. <laughs> it was the low ball. <laughs> it's economical, though. Yeah. <laughs> Don't waste any energy. Gee, uh... <laughs> They're hard to see anything in that. They were both having a hold there. I'm with you. That's play on. I think the... All the Ruckman in this game and all the Ruckman for the rest of the weekend, take note, you need to adjust in a hurry now because the umpires are going to be all over this. The message has been sent in this first quarter and the Prez was not happy at all with that one. No, we only saw on. one side of it. <laughs> we were able to see both sides. Opportunity here, G. Soldo, you just wonder with Nan Kervis lurking in the background in the VFL game this weekend. He knows, he wants to hold his spot, doesn't he? See what he can do tonight. He'll be aware of that pressure it was. Little purchase on the footy. Penderbury able to pick it up, bang it inside 50. Cox under the footy here. Meyer check. Taken off his feet, but not before he got the kick away. Good mark taken by Broad. Little handball out to Short. He's one of their best kicks. Edwards was thinking about taking them on through the corridor. He said, no, I'll continue with Short. Hooley now. Down the northern wing here. High footy. Here comes Rewalt. So good. Done a couple of good things already. The reel and go. Jack gets it long. The perfect one-on-one -on -one here for the Tigers. Lynch up to muscle under. Out the back door and goal. Lynch gets his second goal of the night. That is superb Tiger play. Wow, what about the way they whipped that out of defence with the good use of Short initially and 
transfer of the footy. The overlap that they were able to create and have been able to. They've got Collingwood on toast right now. And that one-two punch up in the forward line, working beautifully. Well, this is why I think they're... It can be a better team than when they won the Premiership in 17. Rewald up the ground, moves it quickly. Lynch, as I said before the game, just in fantastic form. Look at that agility. Absolutely brilliant. They now have the twin towers, rather than just Rewalt that they had in 2017. And Scholl did some good work there, just cutting across and helping. But no, you're 100% right. You wrote all about that this morning, Wayne, and uh, talked about Richmond's strength and where Lynch is at. And here he is again, Ruffhead. Had a tiny little win there with the smother, but it's one-way traffic for the moment. Pressed here. Trelaw who kicked the opening goal of the match. Boy, that seems a long time ago. Maynard got a fair bit on it. Beautiful mark oh, against the flow by Asprey. Contested possessions Brian. completely flipped. The territory battles totally Richmond. And up forward, they look so threatening. And be a little concern with Trent Cochin, as Richo just told us. That's a fair chunk of time on the bench for the yep. skipper. Well, that's an abnormal time on the bench, isn't it? 11 yep. minutes, unless you have an issue. Dugowie, Maynard, so perhaps something up with Trent Cotchin. Down the field, Collingwood. So this is an advantage free to Varco down the field. Needs something, not going to get it before the quarter time break. The Pies look so good in the opening couple of minutes, and then after that, a team that's won four in a row, and the Tigers in front of 75,000 here at the MCG. The rain stops. And the Tigers in complete control. They lead it at quarter time by 26. 5 4 34 Richmond. Collingwood 1 2 8. Rather than major issue because he's got extraordinary happy body language. It, it makes the decision if the text comes through a lot easier. It was going to be easy anyway for him, I think, don't you? Yep, it was. Gets the wet jumper off and says, Get on with it, you blokes. There's a game to be won. And the Tigers were sensational. Kicking the last five goals of that first quarter. In danger, Richmond. Pushing up to 80,000, about 76, 77 in the house here at the moment. Out of the middle of the ground. The Tigers long ball into their attacking oh. 50 free kick. Oh. Advantage, advantage, advantage. Collingwood able to run away with the footy. Pendlebury gives it on to Crisp. Crisp got good penetration with the footy. To go in front. Spotted away there by Grimes. Now Presti has got it all to do. He's surrounded by three magpies. Brown trying to harass. Dacos there. Some famous names at Collingwood. Pendlebury. High ball inside 50. To go Well done again. Gee, it was good by Grimes to defend yet again. Dacos. Oh, Caught hot with the footy by Baker. Gee, you're spot on, BT. Grimes was wonderful against great opposition because Dugowie had really set himself there. Revolt's little handball. Back to Trelaw. Back to Howe. Howe's long ball to centre half forward. Cox made a pretty good contest. Ball gets to ground. Brown tried to get out. He couldn't. Taken by Prestia, getting down and dirty. Almost a main out. Couldn't quite get the... Uh, Pendlebury couldn't get the toe poke away. Crisp. He does toe poke down the line. Trelaw pretty clean, but he asked a lot there. And Phillips able to go back. Sharon Berg on the left foot. They are really battling to get any clean ball here. And Presley are able to mop it up, so to speak, for the Tigers. Need to hit the scoreboard early here, Collingwood. Need to get the match a little bit back on their terms. Next away here. Sharon Berg initially inside to Grundy. Now Grundy here on the half back line. Takes the gamble and goes inside. Dacos immediately wants to get on with it. Side bottom in great position in front of Ellis. He wants to keep going as well. He wants someone deep. Cox is coming short to you. If I was Cox, I would have gone to the goal square. Now out wide to Goey. Superb kick by Dacos over the shoulder of Steele side bottom. Set this up and then... Sidebottom just wanted somebody to present. Dugowie kept on moving, created that little bit of space in front of him, and that's a beautiful kick. Uh, and that was the key to that, Lingy. Movement. You continue to move and defenders, well, they get uncomfortable and came to the... Right foot banana, got it bending, not back enough. It did start to bend towards the end of its flight, but it's important that Varco kept leading at the ball carrier as well. Then it opened up the space for Dugowie behind. Hooli goes short. So Asprey. And 
he goes down the line, so to speak. Revolt Soldo, Grundy got a hand in there. Edwards got an effective kick away, and Rioli jugs it beautifully to Lambert. How smooth and sweet it looked. Lynch, now he's got a vacant goal, so he could skin it home if he likes. He's doing half of half, he skins it home. It's a goal, one way or the other. Touch the ball. I think we're going to review it anyway. Off the Score inside of his ankle. So Lam oh, Lambert, will, goal. Lambert will have the goal. Well, please just check. Yeah. Review Incredible. underway. Incredible work rate from Lambert. He's the one who kicked the ball to Lynch and then got back there to just get his foot onto that one. I think that'll be called a goal for sure. Yeah, that's the angle there where you see it. Here's review the complete. Shit. Decision on scoreboard. Goal. Smart kick by Lynch because he, he, he summed up a situation either I'm going to skid it through or we're going to get that, the. Exactly, that's yeah. a perfect kick. That's exactly what you do. Kick it straight to goal, and if it skids through, it's a bonus. Yeah. Lambert gets to it. He did. It, it sort of stood up a little bit on him, didn't he? It did. So he, he had to eventually find the boot with it. So Lambert has been officially BT awarded the goal, which is the right yep. call, obviously. Amazing work rate. That's why Richmond love him so much, Kane Lambert. You can see on the Telstra tracker, leading the way with Tom Phillips. The distance covered. And it is the perfect kick. That's either going to skid on and end up a goal for Lynch or Lambert just gets the boot to ball. Great play. Oh, sensational. Crisp. Edwards will mark this. Immediately marked, splits wide. Richmond really starting to get a hold of this. They've won four in a row. The Tigers and they're on a charge. Beautiful kick by Prestia in front of Rewalt. Knocked the arms of Hoskinelli. The advantage is paid to Law. Quickly to Phillips onto his left foot here. Funny little kick it was. It found in the end Chris just short of the wing of the interchange area. Careful kick. He's just wanting to try and get a contest down the line. Majek provided it. So what did Collingwood do? How can they change all of this? What has been evident is when that ball has got it, got into the open, Richmond's leg speed over the ground, they look a lot quicker than the Pies. Scholl doing the ruck work here. We thought this might be an area that Grundy might get a big advantage at. Not this time. Scholl actually played the percentages as good as a kick and gets the stack and read it well. And back to Scholl. Oh, sweet. That was so sweet. Kicks the full forward. Lynch got in the right spot. Revolt held on to. Revolt tried to trap it back. Ruffhead did okay. Crisp to Lord Deep. Just bangs it, hoping, hoping. Hooley had to search. Search cleverly to Baker. Baker's a little underground one. Prestia, no fumble there. Goes bang to full forward. Lynch caught out of position. Ruffhead's had a tough old Play night. Little Topo heard the up. Howe tries to get it as far as he can. Not far enough, but they might get out of it. Can the big guy get down that low? No. Not tonight. He looked out there, Howe. He didn't uh, like what, what he saw, but he had to kick it. Otherwise, it would have been pinned. And now Asprey. So Richmond playing this in their forward half of the ground. Slow it down. They've got a great knowledge of when to go and when to stay. This man here loves to go. Martin, quickly inside. I think that might have been Maine that let that one go. Rioli caught with a footy. Now Stack's got it. He's tackled by a couple. Even Dusty's kick then. He was happy to kick a mongrel. Hard to mark. And if that ball isn't marked, chaos. Richmond loved the chaos. Yep, absolutely. Grundy kicked it into his own man. Out the back door, Maine. Little handball here, so under real pressure at the moment. Hoskin Elliott, Alexa Southern stand side of the ground. High ball. Majacek did well. He had Broad with him. Here's Basha Hooley, ground level. He couldn't pick it up. Slippery footy. Chalor now happy to find the boundary line, but he didn't. Graham was almost away. Umpires wearing black armbands tonight too, by the way. And they are wearing those for a life member of the Umpires Association, Doug Purse, who sadly passed away this week following a battle with MND. And Doug, who was a goal umpire, 105 games, the 87 grand final, the 89 grand final. Signalled 42 goals in the 89 grand final. 21 apiece. What about that? 
as now Sharon Berg in the last line of defence. She was in a good position to see one of the greatest games of all time, wasn't it? One of the, one of the great performances. Goals, yeah, well, and Gary Ablett Sr. at his oh. finest, eh? <laughs> Pressure on Collingwood, mounting, mounting, worried out of it. Martin Toepokes gives it to Stack. Stack's uncertain. Now he's not. He just chips off at home. Got a good football brain, Martin, hasn't he? He's got a football IQ. Gee, and that symbolises where this game is at, where this match is at tonight. Even perceived pressure. It's building, building, building. And this bloke is... You feel like running into September with a head of steam. It's his favourite month. I said before, speed over the ground, also speed of mind. Dusty Martin there just fought his way through that beautiful, and then Sydney Stack, hasn't he been a revelation? Oh, that was massive by Stack, and Richmond have stacked tonight, haven't they? They are in all sorts here now. Down 37. Can they find something to ignite them? There's Edwards. Richmond, another clearance here. Chole, a little clumsy, but still got the kick off the ground short. Just trying to tidy things up. He does to Castagna. Castagna through traffic, gets the ball forward. Any which way will do. Maynard backing back, couldn't hold on. Maynard with the quick soccer. Always under pressure, the Collingwood defenders. Hooley keeps it alive. Stack just stretches the arms, keeps the ball away from the defender. Oh, brilliant play. Stack in the end gets on the end of it. High ball, Howe. Punched away from Lynch. Spilling to the dangerous Martin. He just needed another half step. Official uh, word from Richmond now, guys. A very minor uh, hamstring for Trent Cochin. And we're going to have a quick word to him at half time. Oh, that's great, Richard. Thank you for that. So, at this time in the prelim final, it was Collingwood 45, Richmond 9. So, the mirror image Martin twisting, turning. Castagna back to Dusty. Wobbles it. Chole. Yes. He's been impressive. And so, well, he is impressive. Full stop. <laughs> Dusty Martin is just destroying this game. He's on fire, forward of centre, middle of the ground, clean, doing it all. And we thought Grundy was going to have a little advantage in the ruck. Not so tonight. And he's the one, I mean, Brian raised it earlier, Nankervis lurking. Now, Soldo Nankervis, I don't think, works. Chole Nankervis does work, doesn't it? So how is on from fullback? Where can they find something? Maya check. Side bottom. Grundy and Ashby happy with the ball over the line. I just think Collingwood now have got to realise, well, plan A hasn't worked the way we've wanted to structure up the ground. So let's try something different and perhaps risk getting more goals scored against us, but even up the numbers forward of the play. Don't just let Richmond have that spare and the structure exactly the way they like because Collingwood can't even get it past halfway at the moment. So change things up a little bit and see if it has an effect on this game. Side bottom. Little handball out the back door. Joel. Good work. Side bottom. Really impressive. Should have got a three in the back. This in the back. Collingwood. <laughs> Still side bottom here. So at, at which part of the ground are you talking about with that link? This kick, this right. kick here long is just going back to Richmond's structure completely. Main took an eternity to get rid of it, thus the tackler arrived, put him off, Bacon to Graham. Graham wide, sliding handball to short, slicing kick forward, rough head. So yeah. rough head marks that ball there, but he was sitting back about 20 or 30 out from goal, just as the spare, doing nothing when Collingwood are trying to move the footy in. Richmond to set up beautifully. So be prepared that, to not have Roughhead there and have a better contest forward of the play. Vlosten's high ball in. Revolt the target. Chi Presti robed it brilliantly. Gets it to stack. He's so hard to bring down. And kicks a behind. Chi, he may not win the Rising Star, but he's going to give it a shot, isn't he? Oh, he's, he's got the X Factor. Does the basic so well, but then he's just got that magical bit of play that he can come up with but talk about speedling it's all those it's also the speed that they put pressure on with not just when the ball's in the open they are 
a very, very quick team, this Tiger outfit. So, Maine, not very appetising to just kick down the line there, is it? But it's all he had, keeping it alive. And guess who? Well done, Bashahuli. But Lynch, already two goals in the first quarter. And, and they're the marks we spoke about before the game, BT. The quick kicks are drop forward. So you're playing in front, easy, you, you just fall onto it, easy chess mark. Eighth consecutive goal on offer here for the Tigers. Lynch for his third. Kick of 40 metres. Slight rain falling. He's growing in confidence, isn't he? And that one will come back and up as well for his third goal. Eight in a row, 45-point Richmond lead. So Lynch has three. And the Tigers are looking unstoppable here. They've been building, as I said, they've won four in a row. Just about got all their players back. And Kerb is still to come, but the Ruckman playing well here tonight. And a few others as well. When you look at Caddy. They've got Caddy trying to force his way back in. He's in their best 18 at his best. Found a couple of good players in Garthwaite. <laughs> now, in the short term, the percentage is not important because Richmond go above Collingwood anywhere tonight, but they've jumped above them in percentage. They started the night four behind them. So, at the end of the season, that may be a factor. We know the winner tonight's top four, but Richmond's percentage tonight already is telling. Collingwood are going to be, have to be very careful here. This shellacking is becoming really damaging in more ways than one. So Prestia, Martin, belting the ball forward, Lambert. They're in front all the time, aren't they? And there's that kick again. Yep. Now he's read the game so well. Lynch couldn't quite stick that one. Crisp, good tackle though by Ellis. Little give Soldo, Rioli, check sides at the full four G. I reckon Jack thought he had it, he didn't quite. Sharon Berger slipped away, Prestia held up by Quaynor, Rioli off the ground, it was touched. Powell did the goalkeeping and turned six into one. Everything they do is dangerous. It is 28 inside 50s to 12, Duck. I reckon that's now leading to the defenders of Collingwood just being so reactive, taking up the position behind, almost giving them a little cuddle from behind, not wanting to read the play or be brave and stand in front. Wayne Hall, Cox, little chesty, he let go of there. And if you look back now, Grimes is back at the defensive 50, just marshalling, directing, getting everyone in position. It's so hard for Collingwood to gain any territory while that's the case. Yeah. Elliot's going back now to try and Yeah, I reckon Grimes. that's the one they've got to even up. Be prepared to lose a couple here to get something going forward. Great vision showing what you're talking about there, Richo. Well done. Over the back it comes. Now, this is as deep as Collingwood have had it for a length of time. They're going to get a stoppage on their half-forward line. Surely they need to make something of this. Time ticking away. Crowd not far from 80,000. And the Collingwood supporters here at the moment would be damn nervous, not just with the result here tonight, but with their season. What is happening? They've won one of their last four games here, the Tigers, and that was by one point to West Coast, and they were in all sorts of trouble in that game as well. Thank you. Here we go. Hold in, Collingwood. Cox, move out now. Play on, play on, play on. See, that's interesting, so... When he moved off the line, Dusty was in the right spot. Penderbury forced to kick in a hurry. Or to go, he almost couldn't quite. They needed some inspiration from him. Thomas tried to get it out. Collingwood put some forward pressure for one of the few times, certainly since the first 10 minutes of the match. I reckon this could have almost been 50 metres from Mark. Yep. A point called play on, but gee, he was lucky. It was tight. And Mark was forward at the moment, yep. was he? So Collingwood win that stoppage, get to the pocket, Elliot. Hard for Cox here. What does he do? Well, he sort of left it in the end. Hip and shoulder, Penderbury and Stack and uh, a stoppage. So Penderbury is one of those wise heads that how does he sort of orchestrate a few things that might benefit his team right now? Because they are so far down the world, they can't see anything really of any blue sky at all right now. They just need to lock this ball in their forward half of the ground. Give them two or three minutes with the ball in their forward half, but guess what? Immediately it comes out. 
Sharon Burke couldn't get low enough. Hoskin Elliott with a pretty unorthodox looking ball. Now Lambert. They're in an attacking position again. Lambert immediately out to the southern side. A little risky ball hung in the air. Well done, Crocker. Got the all or nothing ball. Elliott farms it out to Crocker. Crocker back inside. A little miss kick. Grimes with the half volley soccer kick. Picked up by Brown. Brown from 40. Collingwood in desperate need. And can you believe it? Lambert on the line. Yeah, that, that's a, a risky kick, isn't it, tonight? That kick. Across the goal face from Prestia. I think you just got to go down the line tonight. So Collingwood have had a few inside 50s. Nothing much happening. Revolt front spot. How provided the spoil. Baker. I mean, just couldn't quite. Castagna worries him out of it. Gets a second chance through Pendlebury's good work. How to Maynard. Maynard careful kick to go. He well placed. Giga, good job by Short there. No, rather broad. Just a worry to go out of it. And Collingwood are trying to get the numbers even forward of the footy. So they have made a bit of a change with their structure. It means they really need to crack in here at these stoppages in the middle part of the ground just to make sure Richmond can't surge onto it. A couple of tiny little wins for them here, Lingy, and I mean tiny. Crisp. Able to duck under that, just holding the ball at their forward end for a minute or two here. Giving them a chance to either press to your handball. Crisp. Stack all over him. Martin's done that a few times tonight. Just try to bully it off the ground. Bolton able to pick it up. Castagna running it towards the boundary line. He's under some Maynard pressure. Picked up by Quainor. He immediately swings the ball. So this is another little win here for the Pies. They need score, though. They need score. To go, he did well to fire out the handball. Here's Thomas. Left foot around the corner. Collingwood go inside 50. Rare opportunity at their end of the ground. Ball in dispute. Picked up Rioli. Soldo and Rioli again to remove the ball out of the forward 50 for the Pies. Yeah, he worked hard, Rioli. Might be coming back. Hoskin Elliott. Looked a good kick in Elliot. So one Elliot to another. He's had very few looks at it tonight, Elliot. We've hardly called his name. First mark of the night for Jamie Elliot. Has he got the distance? Well, he's going to run, run, run and get himself into a pickle, didn't he? But that ball could bounce for Brown. Didn't quite. Just in the right place at the right time. The Tigers all the time. She Rioli and Prestia worked it well. Lambert releases it. Baker in the back half, high ball, gained some time, gained some meterage. Howe takes what was a comfortable mark for his standards yeah. in the end. And it was made comfortable by the work of side bottom at ground level, Bruce. So Collingwood, I won't say they're stemming the bleeding because they're not scoring, but they've just given themselves a little twinkling here. Just a little bit of ball inside their forward half. Side bottom, rip a ball along the ground, just to behind. And still side bottom. Uh, a bit of Cottingwood possession, eh? Prestia. Low ball, dangerous ball. Attacked it hard, couldn't quite Pendlebury. Ball's out for the Tigers. Oh, Scharenberg worked by Lynch. He's having a night, Lynch, isn't he? Kicks to a 50-50. Revolt. Oh, gave it back to Tom as he kicked his fourth. Oh, they're going to love that. The Tiger Army are going to go into raptures. It's a new firm, but we'll be calling it the old firm, won't we? Lynch and Revolt. Who's the genius that got Lynch to Richmond, eh? Who's the genius? It just feels like the jigsaw's complete when you're watching tonight, doesn't it? Uh, he's, he must be feeling as good as he's felt for a very long time. Gee, I wish I'd written that story this morning. <laughs> Once again, it's Lynch's agility. And then the, the fact that his body and his fitness is just built and built and built, just to follow up and get that ball and the finish on the run. He's doing every, absolutely everything that you want from a key forward. And Rewalt just as good. And, uh, Duck, bad news, because with Lynch running right with four goals, Roughhead's gone down the man, to the room. So it's more issues down back for the Pies. Holding the man, Collingwood. Time back on. Hold there. So Dugowie from the middle of the ground. 
Five footy Cox, had his feet taken from under. No free kick, fair enough. Flossed in the clearing ball and to go here again. Wants to go, need a little ball to Law. Has he got the wheels from there? Probably not. Searches outside for a fast lead. Elliott was there, ball was kicked a little high. Asprey to tidy it up. Good little ball on the ground. Rioli just had a fumble, cost him that moment. Hoskin Elliott inside 50, got a skitter. Wrong side of the post. Forty-nine point margin for the Tigers is short, bangs it long. He's done that a lot tonight, hasn't he? Short. That's his play trademark. On, on, Powell on, had won the battle over Revolt. Short to Dacos. Now he did use the ball really well earlier tonight. That's a good kick as well. Orgy Varco had to take it and he didn't. It bounced off him. Big opportunity missed. Vlosten to Prestia. Prestia off that step of his. Chole worked. Maynard cleverly. Good contest here. Scholl's played the percentages. He did it well. Lynch tries to toe poke again. Scholl comes again. Lynch holds him up. Ball squirts out the back. Thomas under pressure. Down the line to go. He took a strong mark. Paul Kane. It's interesting to watch Scholl play. He's a, he's a thinker, isn't he? Uh, and the work rate is yep. huge. A athleticism. Dugowie. Side bottom. Looks sore. Dugowie. Landed heavily in that marking attempt. Hoskin Elliott can go quickly. Crocker's loose, got space. No one within 20, plenty of time. Long ball. Cox closing Elliott there as well. Who's the front and centre? It looks like it's Penderbury. Little handball away to Brown. He's caught at the tackle. It was Graham that eventually got him. Short, Soldo, Floston, Richmond. Out of the fit here. They're doing everything right tonight, the Tigers. Lambert being pursued here by Maine. Little handball back inside. It's Castagna to Martin. Martin over the top. Stack, desperate to get Martin to keep running. Martin, little chisel around the corner. And to go again. To side bottom. And then side bottom. <coughs> Cleverly. To Howe. How Trelaw had to wait, but it was okay because uh, he was able to then get clear when Richmond were committed. Elliot has to play as a tall, he does that. El Grimes has to play as a small, and he does that so well. Ben Hart was as good as a god, I reckon, a few years back for Adelaide. You know, you would have played against him in grand final. Gr Grimes can do the same things, can't he? Oh, he's, he's brilliant. His speed plays tall, plays small, exactly like you mentioned. Ben Hart, he was yep. a he was a superstar. Good similarity, actually, Bruce. Very good. Grundy, Soldo, Trelaw, strong. Picked up 10. Won't be deliberate, I don't think. He was tackled when he kicked the footy. So another throw in here. BT Collingwood have not been this far behind at halftime if the score stays like this since round 1 2016 against the Swans. Gee. They are in a heap of bother here tonight. It's going to have to be a massive turnaround for them to work themselves even into contention. There's Thomas. Level footy. Pressed here. Castagna. Well done, the Tigers again. They put themselves into an attacking position in the middle of the ground. Lambert, that deft little touch on a Castagna. Now Brandon Ellis, neat little ball. Here he is, Lynch. It's kicked forward tonight. Mark this one it. inside the centre square. He does indeed, Lingy. That's the direction. The ball fell short. Hoskin Elliott read it nicely. He did to Howe, side bottom. Having to play so much in the back half side bottom, isn't he? He's sort of playing as a sweeper almost. And the goalie's back there as yeah. well, so. Yeah, a lot of possessions by Colin have been gathered across this half back part of the ground, but going forward, they don't even look like it. Asprey committed to the punch, couldn't quite. Hurley was squeezed up by the Vlosten handball. So the Pies, one last chance maybe to erode this massive deficit. Can they just take something into halftime? A minuscule of hope to go his kick to full forward. Cox nearly. He made a pretty good attempt there, the big fella. Pendlebury squeezes it. Elliot clever. Varco not happening for him tonight. Richmond normally swarm, they do. The handball was pretty good coming out by Graham. He butters up. Varco got a second look. Pendlebury will goal. Yes, he will. He's the captain. He's a finisher. And 
you know what? He's the right bloke. I mean, it'll give them something, Lingy. A tiny little thing. Well, I hope it does, Bruce, because right now the kicks are relying on either a miracle mark, about four deep from a Mason Cox or a Brody Majacek, or a million dollar crumb. So they need to get something going in that forward half of the ground. And the skipper might be the one who just sparks something, but hasn't been pretty. It's a good goal, Duck. Yeah, very good goal. And, and look at the uh, cleanliness there, just the clean hands, one hand, and then the beautiful finish. He's a class player, he's a champion. Scott Pendlebury, a dead set superstar. He's three, he'll play his 300th in week one of the finals if he doesn't have any misses from here. Trelaw out of the middle, under 30 seconds remaining in the first half. Been a disaster for the Pies. They've got to find something at half time. Floston from centre half back, immediately forward. Quainar leading out strongly, wants to go. He does. 13 seconds. Collingwood a chance to score if they get a clean ball going forward. Thomas will give them that. Got it inside 50. Here they come. High ball. Rocker. Rocker's marked. Dimmer's disappointed. He leaves the box. And Crocker will have a shot after the half-time siren. Don't you love that from Isaac Quainer? Just backed himself, intercept, and thought, no, I'm just putting the foot down. Get it in forward. Well done. Fourth game of AFL footy. He wasn't overawed. To Great job. Get it back under 40 points to give them something. Two goals in a row to not leave them out of the contest at half-time. Look at the Richmond players on the mark. Crocker goals! Pies have got a couple in a row. And they just reel it back in ever so slightly. Look at the enthusiasm there and the body language that that has created. Important, I reckon, really important. So half-time here, Richmond with a massive lead, but Collingwood get the last two goals of the first half. It's 61 to 24. 19, 20 and hitting the scoreboard and also contributing with setting them up. It's a big lead, but it was a lead that was reduced by two very late Collingwood goals. Can they build on that now? Well, they can't, particularly with this dry weather, Bruce, that we're experiencing right now. It can be trimmed back very, very quickly. But guess what? You have to play well for that to happen. And Richmond may not let them do that. Lynch... An opportunity for number five early in the second half. Yeah, Roughhead is still Stay on the him, bench, Brady. guys. So down. that's going to play a part because he's obviously the matchup being the tallest defender for Lynch. And, you, and now you absolutely try to isolate him in those one-on-ones. So Lynch, distance the only issue, but he's normally a long kick. This one may fall just short. It does, and swatted through by Hoskin Elliott. Is Roughhead showing signs, Matthew, that he might be able to get back or not? I'm just looking. I'm not even sure he's out on the interchange bench, Bruce. I can't see him there. So, Main in that back pocket. Kicks in the Hoskin Elliott direction. Good marky. Dustin, two metres. Tap Dustin, it. two metres. So a couple of warnings. It's a clever mark by Hoskinelli. So he gets that 50 penalty. Does he get it down far enough? To go, he played it well. No high, apparently, with short. Vloston, broad, forced to the boundary line. My check's been quiet. And Soldo does the percentage. So what happens here? Is this a high one on to go? He got down low. No. Short played that well. Yeah, he did. He'd Overcommitted it, a little bit more. That's high contact and an easy shot at goal. Short dashes away to the southern side. Collingwood got it covered, covered here with the numbers, though. Hoskin Elliott. Yeah. Immediately back inside. So another opportunity presenting here. My check. Gee, that should have been a free. I reckon Broad got a piece of him after the initial contest, although Maya check not complaining. Let's have a look here. Uh, probably... At the minor end, and it did look worse on the other angle, but I think the umpire was probably right in the end, the way that he looked at it and viewed it. Sling back into play by the boundary umpire. Soldo trying to manoeuvre Grundy under the footy. 
There's Edwards. Dacos got him in the tackle. Will need to knock it out. Luckily, it came out for him. Grundy extracts to side bottom. Oh, Lambert, sensational hands. Likewise, Prestia. They may have run out of tarmac, and they have. We'll throw it in, attacking 50 for the Pies. Good work in close by the Tigers. Collingwood pushing early here. They need a reward. They need to hit that goal. Grundy, Dacos, side bottom. Hoskin Elliott prominent early in this quarter. High ball, hard to mark, not for Grimes. Well done by Grimes and well done Nathan Broad there. Just subtly bodied Majacek out of the way, which allowed his teammate to mark the footy with confidence. Terrific play. So Grimes going to get to you, Matthew, in a moment. You've got some news on Roughhead. So that kick down the line. What have you got for us, mate? Uh, Roughhead out with concussion, guys. Thank you, Richo. Bit of a blow there for the Pies, but they go forward again. Brown will need to spin out of trouble. Baker tidies it up, fired the handball backwards. Alice couldn't get there. Short couldn't either. Picked up by Dugowie. Little handball to the advantage of Crisp. He has to bust through a few. One of those is Martin. Rioli rips it away through the middle of the ground. Graham got it to a one-on-one. -on -one. Rewalk escapes. How? Now, Lynch wanting it short, and he's got away. He got away because Sharon Berg backed that the kick was going to go long to the square. Great connection between Rewalt and Tom Lynch. And what about the surging pressure from Richmond off half-back? Yeah, they swarmed, didn't yeah. they? Three or four just followed up that footy. They won it back just by weight of numbers. And this rhubarb that players need to play a lot of footy together to have a combination. This is just a perfect example. You don't if you've got a footy brain. Highlighting how much Collingwood are missing Darcy Moore, though. At last for five goals for the tenth time in his career, and he's sprayed it badly to the right. Barely a behind in the end. Poor kick. He's poorest of the night. So no more are you mentioning here, because no rough head now. No Langdon either, yeah. but he's gone for the rest of the season. Darcy Moore still two or three weeks away. Having to just shift them around a little bit down back. And Tom Lynch and Jack Rewalt feeling good about that. So how? Lynch has uh, missed a good chance there. The other one was a fair way out. Sharon Berg put Pendlebury under the pump. He got it back to Sharon Berg. Trelaw. High ball. Tigers have been in control for most of this. Hooley got it back from Vloston. Varco. He's had a fumbly night, Varco. So let's have a look at Ruffhead. So this is where we feel the concussion came. Gee, oh. the Falcon there, so... Good pick up. So, Trelaw. Unusual that a ball could do that. A heavy footy. Yep. So here's Edwards. Working in half back. Broad, back to Grimes. Short ball. Basher Hooley. Asprey. Faked as if he was going to kick to Alice. Eventually, Hooley sends the handball that way. So, no damage done yet against the Pies. Conditions really drying by the moment here. Looks much more playable. And quick scores, a possibility. How did well in the one out with Rewalt. Quickly inside. Go. Can they muster something up here? Got the numbers. Brown this way, that away. Got it back to side bottom. Normally a good user. Put Trelaw under the pump. Trelaw had to get rid of it. He hardly had hold of it. Now the Tigers through Martin. That's a good kick around the corner from Martin. Got it to Castagna. Castagna, eyes light up. Rioli to finish. And hits the post. Gee, that was a great illustration with Collingwood. They, they were out, and yet they couldn't close the deal. No, they're out. Just a couple of little fumbles. You see there, just a little fumble. And then Richmond, they just swarm. They get numbers around. They win it back. Gee, the pressure on Collingwood. Did he get a hand to it? Sh Sharon Burke? He did in a boundary throw-in. Just with Ruffhead, remember in that 2016 final series, he had, had the eye problem. He was out for a bit and not... Probably not relate. Maybe he was going back a bit. Anyway, he's uh, off with concussion tonight. So he looked OK when that happened. He must have had some sort of delayed symptoms then. I suggest here's Lambert off his knee or above, so that won't be out of bounds on the full. Do they outnumber well everywhere, <laughs> Duck? The, that, that pressure and swarming that you're talking about, but then quick kick either way, Richmond or Collingwood's way, they then outnumber at the next one and swarm again. It's been impressive. It's work rate. Yep. Grundy gets Soldo under the footy. At the back, picked up by Dacos. 
Cox under the footy again. Ashbury. Little flick out finds Brandon Ellis. So the Tigers careful, patient in their build up here. Alice will end up going down the line here, nothing on anywhere else. So a high ball right on the head of Rewald. Had to do all the bullicking work in there. Pressed here at the bottom of the pack, trying to extract. Rewald still in the hunt. Phillips got an inside out slider. Hawley able to cut it off though. He did he cut across in front of Tagoe. So to reload here. Now, where's Lynch or Revolt? Lynch is certainly in the frame. Big flies against him. Main spread it. Sharon Berg's under pressure. Main Phillips. Does he get enough purchase? He does. Now, Cox has got to at least get a 50-50. He did better than that. To Law. Does he get it over the top? To Goey. Looks and looks and waits. It's not a bad kick. It's not quite going to get the job done. Just one thing. Richmond have kicked one goal in the last 24 minutes. That's the only thing you'd say Colin would have at least stopped the avalanche, haven't they, for yep, the moment? They have. They've stopped a little bit of the bleeding. It's coagulating at the moment, Bruce, but it could bubble up again. I think it's going to start bleeding again very soon, BT. And I reckon Mason Cox has got Stay to find out, a way out, to stop his defensive opponent pushing him under the footy. He's got to come to terms with that. Play on. Happening a lot. High footy inside 50. Look at the Tigers lining up. Martin strong. Got the Dukes out in front and the fans are delighted. And it was the 50 metre paid. But Richmond still when the kick went Plays inside. on around the corner. Lingy Martin to snap the goal. Got his second of the night here, Dusty. They still had options forward of the footy, Richmond. Even though it was a the 50s paid and everyone's running down, Collingwood hadn't got back quick enough. He's had a big night, hasn't he, the champ? So if you think Dusty Martin deserves to be best on ground tonight, head to Google, search AFL vote, have your say. The winner will be announced post-game. And right now, I reckon he's got the front running. I mean, Lynch had he nailed those two, but uh, this is the man. The first five minutes, he actually set the tone of the night, didn't he? Yep. <laughs> and that's where maybe if a Levi Greenwood's playing for Collingwood, four minutes into this game, you just go, go to the job. He looked on, he was clean, he had that focus. And he has had a monster tonight, Dusty. So Grundy won it to Goey, working hard. He's kicked at least four goals in the last couple of matches against the Tigers. In fact, in to Goey's last, there's Martin there having a huge night, deep into the 20s in disposals with a couple of goals. So to go in his last 20 matches, Four goals and five against the Tigers have been his best returns, but he hasn't hit the board tonight. Vlosten tried. Side bottoms worked his butt off, so to speak. The kick to Varko. That's better by Varko. It's a good kick by Brown. And this dual premiership player, who Lingy, yeah, in 09 and 11, you would, yep, he was in those two. Played in a losing grand final, of course, last year. Can he nail this? He's always been a beautiful king of the footy, Trav Varka, and that's a good strong grab. Had to stand strong then. It's not going to get there. No. And force through from behind. He's on the precipice, just in or just out of the team at the moment, isn't he? When you think Stevenson to come back in. And For some reason, he does seem to be on right on the, the edge, doesn't he? But I, I think they're a better team when he's in. Great shot of the crowd here, just under 80,000 tonight. Side bottom. To go, he just bulleted and went and got the ball at all costs. Dacos sends it inside 50 and wide. Crocker and Grimes. Doing a good job. A lot of talk about Rance and what's going to happen towards the end of the year. Duck, can they do it without him? Oh, when he when he did it, BT, I, I said yes, and I stand by that. This, uh, this team doesn't rely on any one individual. That's why they're such a good team. Floston. Back inside, Chol. 
through the hands. Stack. Bursts away. Little bounce. Dynamite kick out wide to Lynch, who's nailed by Sharon Berg. He'll have to knock it out. Varco rescues the day. Little one back to Howe. He belts it out of the danger zone, maybe momentarily. It is BT because Hooley banged it back in a difficult ball. Oh, Rioli! Two young players, one very young. Have a look at this. How Talk about youth. How impressive Sydney Stag played first half of the year as defender. You know, intercept defender, small defender, went forward, kicked goals, and now can do that again. That was, half back. That was Andrew McLeodling. <laughs> you look at him there. That was what Andrew McLeod did in the 97 grand final as a kid. That movement from half back, it looked like him. <laughs> That's a compliment, by the way. Big one. And Rioli hooks it badly, and it's out on the fall. You've compared a couple to some uh, very old pros are absolute superstars for their club. In Ben Hart tonight with Grimes and now Stack with McLeod. And they they end up as good as those two. <laughs> Going to be very happy with their careers. Bit of an Adelaide sprinkling coming tonight from Bruce. <laughs> I'm pumping the Crows up, eh? Holy. <laughs> the old Crows. On the ball. Hollywood. Into the side tonight, Crocker, in with the withdrawal of Taylor Adams. Out of the selected side to Goey. Nice little ball into Brown. Closing 60 metres from goal. Meyer checks in, put it in the space. But it can't go long, VT. No. Grimes is set up by himself, yep. just patrolling back there. He's picking off any high ball, isn't he? Yep. So to go, he, what does he do? Tries to slot up the leader, and they found him in Thomas. Well done, so Jordan Dugowie. Twice in that passage, BT, Dugowie lowered the eyes and hit up the short one. He understood what was ahead of the footy. That's why they're having this shot at goal now through Josh Thomas. Takes those clever players with ball in hand to realise, can't go long, got to lower the eyes. Just one goal kicked in the 15 minutes of play so far by the Tigers. Thomas with a big kick, 45 metres out, no problems at all. So the Pies get their first of the second half. Goal apiece in the third quarter. 37-point margin. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but they've been able to hold them for the good 10 or 15 minutes of this third quarter, but they've got to score, Bruce. Yeah, they've kicked three of the last four. Lingy made a great point, because to go is a bullet at a gate normally, a bullet at a gate, and yet he, he realised the moment needed patience and good execution. <laughs> the Pies are going to get anything going. They've got to get... Some key players into the game. Jamie Elliott's got to be a threat when they go forward. He's got to find out a way to get himself into the game. Jack Crisps as well. Such an important player for this Collingwood team. Been a wonderful footballer. But tonight, despite 15 disposals, not having a real big impact on the game, those types of players have got to support Trelaw and Degoe. How many times tonight have Collingwood won the tap and Apresti has taken the ball away? We just saw it again there. So the Pies with three of the last four. It's not enough to make Richmond nervous. They're sort of just hanging on, aren't they? There is Chris Pendlebury, who kicked that important goal before half-time. Dacos off a step. Thomas, well done by Asprey. Hooley in his 200th match. High ball, Chris has to wait. He didn't quite clunk it. He stood his ground. He puts Trelaw under the pump. Bolton was good. Trelaw. Chris can't get it away. Richmond swarm as they do so effectively. And Collingwood are trying to inch it out. Quaynor, Dacos, good handball because Maynard's a natural left footer. He is indeed. And set up beautifully through the hands of Majacek. Out the back, Floston says, I'm turning to the boundary line. There's no way I'm turning inside. So umpire Mollison says in the back. That's the way he saw it. And that's what he's paid against Crocker on Floston. Floston down the line, high ball. Better from Cox, well done. Brought it to ground. Gave side bottom a, ch a chance. Quainor gets it to Scharenberg. Scharenberg really didn't gain a lot of ground. Quainor found a little bit of space and time out wide. Gee, the kick spent a lot of time in the air. Gave an opportunity to Graham to compete against Phillip. Picked it up wonderfully well and got it back into Martin. 
he says to everyone, just settle, boys. Not good from here. He's got two. Jack Graham, brilliant in a one-on-one -on -one yeah. against Tom Phillips. Wasn't a great kick to him. No, it was, wasn't a great kick, but it shows the quality of some of these lesser-known players at Richmond that they just win those 50-50s and turn them into great chances for their team. Go, gonna get very close to the man on the mark. Martin pulls it, searching for the journey. Has it had too many flops tonight, Dusty? Yeah, and Phillips is not an easy man to beat one-on-one, -on -one, is he? But Graham, what did he win a premiership when he had his fifth game or something, wasn't he? He did the job on Rory Sloan and after quarter time. Push, Collingwood. So Marcek, he kicked two in that prelim final and he kicked two in round two this year, but hasn't hit the board tonight. It didn't hit it last week. Had a good season. Has a Mr. Match since his debut. Chol front spot. Cox at the back that time. Hooley's speed got away from Trelaw. Pressure on short. This is better by the Pies. And then Trelaw wants the boundary line and he gets it. They get a stoppage. Now, can Grundy get down there and monster this stoppage and create a Collingwood goal? Certainly if they got the next two. If they get the next two, you feel like they've got their teeth into it. Yep, two in this quarter would be very, very nice for the Pies, Bruce. Grundy did just that, Bruce, to Pendlebury. Tackled to ground. Collingwood's still a chance. Thomas got Quainer out wide. Maybe a little tap on the head there. Edwards was looking slightly guilty. Cox wraps it up and forces the ball up. Yeah, Richmond get a, another ball up, we talk about, because they get numbers to where the footy is. and They just got an extra number there and they get a ball up. Grundy just tried to lay it for Trelaw, then does it himself. How's he gone tonight, Grundy? I mean, he was colossal last week. He's had an enormous year. Yeah. We're talking about Brownlow figures. They're, they're just OK. They're not on the same page. The centre bounce hit outs. Collingwood have dominated them, but they just keep hitting them to the Richmond sweeper who cleans it up and pumps it forward. I'd love Grundy to try just taking them out of the ruck. One four. forward 50. One goal four for Collingwood in the quarter. One goal three for Richmond. Dugowie! Dugowie! Just when you need a guy like Dugowie! <laughs> they have kicked four of the last five goals. They've narrowed it to 30. And if they can kick one more, Bruce, yep. in this quarter without the Tigers scoring... They are back in the hunt. Well, a couple of things have happened that are obvious. No Cochin, obviously, and the rain has stopped. Yep. <laughs> so the rain has stopped, Cochin's off, we know Ruffett's off, but they are working back into it. <laughs> he's been good to go in. He has. Uh, uh, the problem for the Pies is he's had to go up onto the ball. I mean, that's a ball from a stoppage. He's on ball at the moment. So that is a brilliant goal. They need him probably inside forward 50, though, don't they? Because they're not getting enough out of Elliott and a few others. And look at that. And we talked about them pre-match, didn't we? And the influence the match winners might have on a great tackle. Play on, not 15. Ball play forward, on, not on, 15. Play on, play or Thomas on. has to release. Could Grundy hold it up? Not quite. They're out, the Tigers. On the burst, Graham. Neat kick. Beautiful kick to Revolt. The strength of Richmond in a chaotic situation in the middle of the ground, they find a way forward, don't they? Well, look at the, they just swarm onto Thomas here. Look at the numbers. The Richmond jumpers around the ball, and then they go. Three blokes all running forward. That's why Tom Lynch gets it. Uh, Jack Rewalt, sorry, gets it. Great play by the Tigers around the footy. He's played second fiddle tonight, hasn't he? But he won't mind that. He's pl played this unselfish role for five, six years. It's a strong... Great kick, he's going to love it, and so do the Tiger faithful, the Army. His transformation as a mature footballer has been great to watch, hasn't it? Yeah, it has. He's, he's a better footballer in the last few years than he was when he was winning Coleman medals. 78 goals, what, 10, eight, ten uh, seasons ago? He, he's, he's kicking his goals, but what he's doing is he's giving them off. He's the ultimate team man now. He gets great enjoyment out of it, doesn't he? Yep. <laughs> he 
let's have a look at Jordan Degoe's uh, Telstra heat map. And you can see there more of the ball up the ground because he's uh, playing more on ball. They need they need that blob lingy to be further down near the goal square if there to be any chance tonight, I reckon. He's been very good, though. Very, very good. Soldo out the back door. No one home. Trelaw, Pendlebury and Degoe, the man you speak of, Dark, with the don't argue. To Trelaw. Caress little ball around the corner to Thomas. Thomas fronts the goal, tries to hit the man on the lead in Crocker and Grimes adjudicated he got the fist there and therefore was paid the mark. And Duck, you'd think that if Taylor Adams could be playing tonight, that would allow Degoe to get a bit more inside forward 50. And the other bad thing this quarter is Jamie Elliott and Mason Cox haven't touched the footy in the quarter. So there's no other threats really up forward. I need him in both parts tonight. Maynard around the corner. There's Prestia down that line. Elliot with Soldo there. So with Elliot, I mean, he's had so many injuries he missed last year. He's missed a couple of complete seasons in the last four or five. He's good for about 35 goals when he plays, but he, you feel like he's completely out of touch. He's a, he's a small forward for me at the moment that is relying on his marking. Those other things that he was very good at. Good on the deck, can be front and square, can win stoppages in the forward 50. He's now seems to have to take a few marks to have an impact. Bully. Why not? Goes immediately. And why not? Long ball. All one on ones here. Elliot went hard to Goey. Loves gaining speed and coming at the footy. Now Elliot's got it. And they deliberately lock it in. Lucky not to be penalised there, the Pies. Elliot, I reckon, dragged that back in. G to go, he comes with speed to the contest, doesn't he? Knocked down here, Trelaw. Left foot around the corner, broad and grinds. And the latter. Do you reckon Dusty will get the three votes and Tom might get a vote? This, this bloke's been as good as anyone on the ground, hasn't he? He's influence. <laughs> oh. Do you think, Wayne, if... if Grimes went down for some reason. Listen, would that change your rant's opinion? Yeah, it would. It would. I mean, the two of them out makes a big difference in that defence. He's become the general down there now. He's doing the rant's role. Yep. So Baker back to Prestia. Didn't get it far. To Law or to go, just a little hot for to Law, and it'll be a stoppage. The combination of Grimes, Asprey and Foston yeah, just works really well. Yeah. They all understand footy. They can all take a different role if something gets caught out a little bit. Win one-on-ones, but also the intercept marks. It's working well. So no damage here done for the Tigers. Although they haven't surged ahead, they've held this margin roughly at this where it is now for the quarter. Maynard, which makes it tough for the Pies in the last. Majacek, little fumble. Out the back, flossed and rolled it out wide. Prestia, little soccer off the ground, kept it rolling. Couldn't pick it up. Tough ball by side bottom. Edwards to Alice. Do they keep going here for the Tigers if they hold it up? Sydney Stack, little chip over the top. They make some more ground. Bolton faked as if he was going to go wide. Did in the end to Graham. Graham now, low ball around the corner, but inside 50, looking for Shoal. Well done, Hoskin Elliott, a tap the footy. A minute 30 to go in the third quarter. Stack recovered brilliantly, but then taken down. High free kick. He is a pleasure to watch, isn't he? Certainly is, Bruce. He's been a... Great find. Vlosten, good kick to Baker. Baker quickly on the bike. Revolt beautifully placed. Well done, Howe. He had the, the speed and that sort of wingspan, so to speak. So Richmond have sort of held them off, haven't they? Collingwood never quite got that extra goal that they probably needed. Well, what they've done is they've taken 30 minutes out of the game yeah. with no damage. So it now makes it really tough for the Pies in the last quarter. It has to be a monumental task. Here's Castagna, and it may be a little more. Just a behind. So 2-4 apiece in this quarter, yep. BT. Margins where they were at half-time, 37 points. Main. 
Had a tough first season at the Pies, but he's sort of done a good job since then. To block against Dugowie. <laughs> Hooley. And he's got a long leg, we know that. Does he just... He pops it to about 25 metres. Lynch got underneath. Revolt was the second one. Main. Phillips had to go back to the left side. Majacek hasn't been able to sort of complete those marks all night. Martin. And tapped away by Trelaw. Only as far as Broad. Revolt read it beautifully. And he's in a good spot to kick a goal. And Rewalt will get the shot on goal, but Asprey, two on one, wanted the footy more, got in front, gets a hand to it. They get a chaos ball inside 50. Rewalt gets the shot, but Asprey, he's the man that started that. He has to be caught. He doesn't play on around the corner here. Yep. So they'll sort it out now. So now he has to... No, he can still kick around the yeah. corner. That's right. As long as he doesn't go past, past the mark. Yeah, exactly. So it's a tight angle now because he can't really improve it as much and it was beyond him. But the Tigers end up outscoring the Pies in a real arm wrestle of a third term. It's a big lead, isn't it? On a very big Friday night. 78 to 40, Richmond over Collingwood. Graham on screen, number 34, and he has had 14 tackle... Sorry, he's had... 12 tackles so far tonight. 14 is the record by a Richmond player, Angus Graham and Shane Tuck. So he'll probably eclipse that tonight. The most tackles ever for a Richmond player in a game. Thank you, Richo. As we start the final quarter here, the Tigers by 38 and their superstar unloads a barrel inside 50 immediately here. Little handball comes off there. I think it was Stack that got it away. It spells with Rioli. Right foot banana. Didn't quite get it to bend the way he'd hoped. Hey, BT, I've delved into history, and the last time the, the Pies won from this far down at three-quarter time was way back in 1987, round four, against the Tigers, trailing by 39, yeah. and you kicked six goals six. Well, it can be done then. Yeah. Thank Gee. you for that, uh, Duck. <laughs> Only 50% accurate. I thought you were a good kick for goal. <laughs> Side bottom. Do you remember it, BT? No. Okay, Duck, that's Rundy down low. And BT, no, no, sorry, not six goals, six. I've just had a six kicks, six goals. Well, that's more like oh, it. Now I remember. <laughs> Duck's I reading that from his phone and the text message is from BT. I, I couldn't remember the behinds. That's why you confused me. <laughs> Grundy and Soto. Not a, not a great day, six kicks. Side bottom. So still side bottom. Right there. 20th disposal come out. So many off half back, haven't they? Enjoyed that, Duck. Well done. BT did text it to me. <laughs> oh, <goodness. laughs> to go in front. Ellis. Thomas to himself, but it didn't quite work out. Maynard back to side bottom. Good hands to Pendlebury. He had to try and find a way through. He got it back to Maynard. Lovely kick to Chris. Crisp off a step. She asked a lot there of uh, Dugowie. He's been better than bruised tonight, Dugowie, hasn't he? He's been an absolute bull. He's one man that uh, can hold his head high. He's shown that he can certainly uh, go through the middle of the ground there. He reads it well, uses it so well. Clearly their best player. Yeah. Pies have been top four since round five this year. They'll fall out of the top four for the first time since round five and bt for eight of the last 12 letters they've been in second spot yeah. they've been one they've been on geelong's shoulder for eight of those last 12 letters yeah and for the tigers they will have won 29 of their last 32 games here at this ground and guess what their last five games all to be played here plus finals lynch well, if they finish third, BT, they might be off to Perth in the first week of the final. And that's the thing they need to be careful of, Perth. West Coast beat them into that second position. Then not much gain. Stack, little handball out. Sliding to Castagna. Somehow kept it alive. It was only a metre off the target. Have a look at the work from Dusty Martin here at the stoppage. On the move, on the run. Prepared to give it left or right. Didn't matter. Brilliant by Dusty, but just watching that, you'd love a Collingwood player to put some sort of body on him around that stoppage, not just let him have a free run at it. Gee, that's a good grab by Majacek. Hold! So Maynard down the guts. Majacek just not sure what to do here. They 
couldn't really find an option, so he put Crisp under a bit of pressure, short to Hoskin Elliott. Had a good little patch in the third quarter, Hoskin Elliott, when Collingwood started to get a little bit of a sniff. Well, the Bronx cheers for Cox. Maybe mainly from Richmond, I'm not sure, but it's been a tough night for the big American. So Ashbury. Ashbury. Hold it. Three kicks, pretty even tonight. Asprey just kicks long for distance here. Cox just got the proxies and says, well, what about that? And Jack offering his advice as well. Thanks, Friendly as I'm sure it was. <laughs> Jeremy Howe. Somebody just said something very funny in my ear, BT. Do people from Texas appreciate the Bronx? <laughs> <laughs> Little ball into side bottom. Rioli spitting Perrowood out of trouble. So brilliant. On to Martin. Steps through. He thought about unloading. Being the team man he is, comes back to Graham. Rewalt lurking. Funny little up and under. Deliberate kick and Lynch push. Sharon Berg. I reckon that's the first time tonight they've overused it, Richard. Yeah, Dusty, too unselfish. Yeah. Had to just kick that one himself. Keep it on. Play on. It's probably called scoreboard contentment, Duck. <laughs> Sharon Burke, Cox, well, he's, uh, no. he's taken a long time, but... I thought he marked it and then you knocked it out when he hit the ground. Is he in their best team? Not the way he played tonight, Bruce. Long way off it tonight. It might, a couple of marks now are all irrelevant. He's in his best. He's in the best team when he's doing this. The trouble is the ball's got to be put in the perfect spot for him. Yeah, and if it's not in the perfect spot, he's going under the footy. Yeah, he's getting pushed under the footy far too much. And I thought he corrected that uh, against West Coast a couple of weeks ago. And under pressure, you can't all right, always rely on the ball being placed perfectly for you, Duck. Short. Sure, he might be in the frame again here. Didn't quite, but he. Got it to ground, so he's having a little patch here, very, very late. Hoskin Elliott, Crisp. Oh, not a good handball. Martin, that's a better handball. Edwards, Castagna, and he's busy, isn't he? And Lambert with that gut running that uh, as Sydney Stack catches his Thanks, breath. Man. That gut running that I think Lingy pointed out earlier tonight when he got a toe poke onto a Lynch one, eh? So important to the way they play, Kane Lambert and Castagna and Jack Graham. These players, Daniel Rioli. He's been kicking goals too, Lingy. He had two lots of threes, had a good goal kicking. And he's very important to Martin. We've known this. That he'll often do some dog work for, for Dusty, won't he? And he's got it. A second, and the Tigers stretch the lead. It's just a fantastic footballer, isn't it? Yeah, because he's not just a hard worker who does all this sacrificial running and covers for people. He finds the footy and he kicks goals. Yep. He's runner-up in their best and fairest last year. Yeah, he's an absolute beauty. Yeah. So he kicked 15 goals last year. He's kicked 12 this year. I mean, he goes at about three-quarters of a goal a match. It's pretty good, isn't it? Kicked eight in his last four games, Lambert, now. And have a look at the ladder positions. They're live. That's as it stands right now. Nathan Buckley pondering on his birthday today, Bruce. How old is he, by the way? 47, I think, today. I think if, if I'm doing my sums right. Joel in the middle. Little knockdown here to Prestia. Hooley. Edwards there. Fast rushing into Premiership contention here. The Tigers, along with the Cats, and West Coast. And the, and the uh, Pies are drifting a little. High footy. Grundy, side bottom. Quaynor, quick to give it off. But in traffic, Dacos did well to find an opening, but it only as far as Prestia. He concedes ground, but gives a chance to Alice. Now on to Broad. 
Broad goes straight, looking for the lead of Rewalt. Was in front, couldn't handle it. Dacos caught one high up by City Duck. No. Advantage. Advantage paid, free paid. Crisps away. Finds Varco in the middle. Gave it to Pendlebury. Not sure he absolutely wanted it. And he tries to orchestrate something, but couldn't get enough on the kick. Probably should have gone back to Varco, who was running outside again. We talk about Richmond small forwards, the pressure they put on. The other thing they do better than the other, a lot of the other small forwards in the comp is when the ball's in the air. I mean, Rioli and even Stack now, and these, they get up and they get the ball to ground. Doesn't matter if they're outsized. Bolton got down low, uses Hooley on the left. He got a quick kick away. Chole got underneath it. Maynard cut it off. Maynard back inside to Main. Main, who's got that short little kick of his, and that's a poor kick. And Lambert just cuts that off all so easily. No penetration from Main there. Back to short. So the Pies, so what in the big picture, Lingy, what are you thinking the Tigers now? After seeing their four wins in a row and the return to form, what the are you... The Tigers, well, I've just got to correct a little bit what you said, BT. I do that very nervously, but you said... Richmond quickly coming into Premiership contention. I'd say quickly coming into Premiership favouritism. Yep. Form, we know what they've done for the last two years, getting their best team together at the right time of the year. Rioli, acrobat, batically. And if the cards all fall right for them and they end up playing MCG finals all the way through, they've got to be heading towards favouritism. A different way of looking at it. Who would you pick to beat Richmond at the MCG right now? They're already favourite for me. They were favourite before coming into this game. So what's the run home like? Two tough games to finish, but it's all MCG as BT said. So Eagles and Lions to finish? Yeah, and, that, and that's, a, that's a really good finish for them because uh, Brisbane playing some great footy and they beat those two. They'll go in chock full of confidence. Not that they aren't already. Duck with a, just a touch of head. So, on the against so the Richmond. just on the Eagles, they have won their last five at the MCG. Oh, by the way. <laughs> well, oh boy. Uh, oh boy. Uh, Rioli. Lynch wanting it long. <laughs> Duck. Rioli goes wide. Child. And he'll have a ping at goal here. Are we all. A big fan of this young fella? Yeah, I like him. I like his athleticism. And once again, he's at it because of that athleticism, it's that speed that I so talk when, about. When Nan Curvis is ready, does he come back in? Of course he does. He does? I think they play the two. See what Soldo's been okay tonight in the hit outs, in the yeah. ruck work against I'd go with Grant Nan Curvis and this man. All right, so Soldo out for you, Doug. That's for me. Others might have a different opinion. There is Chol, no problems. No problems. Hey, that goal looked better than Soldo's. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same result they wanted. Yeah, it's the same hey, result. Hey, what a bonus, though. What a, the two Ruckman have both kicked a goal. Well, yeah, and we, we, we speak about the Sean Grigg role that they've had in the last few years. That's what this man has done, but he's obviously taller than Griggy. Um, and that's a really nice finish. He's just got speed, does what uh, the rest of the teammates do. He's uh, got a lot of attributes that I think are going to help this team. And he knows that he has to play his best footy every, to, week. To, every week to stay in this team. That's the hunger that a lot of these players have got, Lingy. There's pressure from underneath. So the game high margin now. Martin out of the centre. Claynor onto it. And Richo, their VFL team sitting top of the ladder as well. Is that right? Uh, yes, they are, Lingy. Uh, Craig McRae's team. They actually had... Four premiership uh, players from 17 there today, and Josh Caddy, who didn't play at all with the, uh, a bit of soreness. So, yeah, that, it's a lot of depth there at the moment. To go, he got under a crocker. Elliot, who's had a quiet night. Can he get a goal late one? Billy does. Rolls it through. Well, you highlighted him, Lingy, earlier. It's been a... It's been a shallow night in many ways he probably needs some continuity he hadn't kicked a goal since when was it round seven but he look he hadn't played a lot since round seven but i think his last three or four matches he played he'd been goalless so he just picks up a little scrap eh?
So are they completely safe? I mean, they're going to play finals, aren't they? They're going to play finals. They've got to hold on a bit and just scramble some wins in that run home there. A couple of tough matchups, but they've just got to get all their players back. Get Adams in, Darcy Moore, Stevenson back from that suspension and hope that they can put it all together in September. To Gary, rips it away out of the middle and immediately to the punt road end, but Boston will allow this to roll. Just think of that Essendon game, BT. Yep. The last match of the year, possibly a Friday night, who knows, but yep. that could really mean something for these two teams where they finish Collingwood Essendon. Yeah, absolutely, it could. And that is looking likely that AFL yet to announce that fixture at round 23. But an Essendon-Collingwood game to come in that round. Nice footy again. Knocked away underneath it. Baker, clever. Knocked down to Bashahooli. Get a lot of distance on the corner, on the kick around the corner. Mark, just a little fend off. Hung on to it, waited. Milked as much time as he could until Presti got close enough to receive the handball. Main under Rioli attack. Handball's backwards. Sharon Bird has to concede a little ground. Rioli, brilliant with the tackle. Trelaw, lovely handball. Quainor goes inside, 50. Right. Been magnificent, hasn't he? He really has. It's been a classic defender's job tonight. Flosson has to release. Didn't actually had time in the end. And that little kick down the line. Grimes just played Crocker, no respect at all then. He just left him and said, I'll go and get the footy. Crocker stood there and watched. Chol worked them underneath. Yep, Maynard. Because he keep it in not quite, so out on the full. Grimes's marking tonight in the wet intercept marking has been really first class. He's had six of them. Yeah, and he hasn't he hasn't looked like dropping them, Lingy. Who gets the coaches' votes? That'll be interesting. You'd think Martin, wouldn't you? But Grimes may get them. He, he's, he's got to be up there, Grimes. That, this so, has been some sort of game from a defender. He's so careful with the footy. His effective disposal, Richo, very high in the 80s as well. Well, he just knows his limitations, Dylan Grimes. Does the obvious things. Yep. Dion Presti at BT just kicking that footy. He's up to 31 disposals. Again, continuing his form. Again, he's just in. I reckon he'd be winning their best and fairest down first year. So career best year for him, Richo? Yeah, absolutely. One of the one of those games for Grimes, he won't get Brownlow vote more than likely, but I'll tell you what, if it was a if it was a grand final, he'd be in there voting for your Norm Smith. Yeah. And Presti, I think, ran runner up to Gary Ablett a few times at the Gold Coast, I think, in their best and fairest up there. But there's a bit more competition here in this team. Oscar Elliott, Edwards. Chol. Holding the man, Collingwood. So Chris Mayne. Chris Mayne. Chris Mayne. Duck, do you know how many Brownlow votes Grimes has got in his career today? Wouldn't be many. It is Something naught. tells me naught. he has got. He's got he none. Ha he hasn't had a Brownlow vote. Oh, he's, but how many games has he got to BT Grimes? He's up to. This is a good test 44. tonight, didn't it? Of the Brownlow, isn't it? It is. It is. So because one, he's been as important as anyone on the ground. 144. And I reckon that with the coaches, he will get a very high number tonight if it's not the, the most. <laughs> This, that's the problem with the Brownlow a little bit, isn't it? The guys at either end of the ground don't get rewarded in it. It's really only the Norm Smith on grand final day, maybe the Anzac medal, at the, those high profiles that they yep. they can win those medals. So you're saying that the, we should change the voting for the Brownlow some way, Richo? Well, the match winners don't get votes sometimes. OK. <laughs> He's just a little jerky about it at the moment, <laughs> is Richo, as Brown goes high. Elliot couldn't hold the mark. Alice got a go, and he did this time. Side bottom, bowled him over. Little ricochet ball picked up by Majacek. Handball backwards to Pendlebury. To Law. Smother by Prestia. He allowed Alice to tidy up, and now Castagna through the middle. Prestia demanding that he gets the footy back. He does. Neat little use out wide. Jack's got a lot of freedom to do whatever he wants. Lynch is now coming at the footy in the pocket. Here he comes, the big man. Couldn't quite hold on, Lynch. Made a good second effort, and he crashed into Pendlebury. Dylan Grimes just got up a little bit sore from that. Jamie Elliott throwing the elbow back. Or hand, no. Maybe in the throat. Pendlebury. Brown trying to get down low. Did well, Brown, to Varco. Varco with some run and carry. Now, Elliott had to engage early. 
Grimes won the first battle. Elliot goes to ground. Cox tried to pirouette. Hard to do when you're Cox. Back to short. Back to Hawley. He's going to have a lovely 200th present tonight. Good kick to Soldo. Soldo with that little kick to Castagna. And the umpire stops Hoskin Elliott getting a crack at him. And Hoskin Elliott's range, he might have been able to get there. <laughs> little one out wide to Edwards. So the Tigers still wanting to drill this home. Pressed here to Lynch. And Lynch will get a look at his fifth. Lynch is now saying, uh, how long has this been going on for, this type of delivery? <laughs> that is just beautiful use. <laughs> so this is one of his easier shots for the night. 45 metre kick directly in front. Four goals, one. Score involvements though, 12. Lynch close to the man on the mark. Goal, he's got five. loving it they know their Tigers are back Jim, watching him BT in September action is going to be one of the joys of the season I reckon it is going to be one of the most interesting things of the whole year what impact he can have in September so as Lynch with five tonight so these are the men that have kicked 50 goals for the Tigers since 1994. So Matthew Richardson eight times, Jack Revolt eight times. They're both here tonight. So Lynch now on 45 goals is going to obviously get that. And there you go, Richo. You... <laughs> a little slight bit of wobble here. Just a little bit. Just a little win for Richo. <laughs> Martin off the ground. And just saying early, Duck, seeing, Hoskinen, seeing Lynch play in September is going to be an absolute intriguing pleasure I think this season yeah, I totally concur kick by Varco forward cut off by Brown tried the toe poke my checked it well oh really well clever gee you'd love that to win you a, <laughs> something like that to win you a match at the moment it's a little irrelevant but it was a good effort wasn't it Terrific effort. He was good against West Coast a couple of weeks ago, Duck, my check. He hasn't had a great one tonight, but I think he kicked four against yeah, Eagles, didn't he? And worked really hard. <laughs> he's on track. He's on track to match what he did last year in yep. terms of goals. He, he's a good player. Yeah, he is. <laughs> Old fashioned. Haven't made uh, too many mistakes tonight. That one probably should have gone out, but he's just an old-fashioned footballer, my check. The more you watch them, Brian, you just feel like Stevenson is just such a, a yep. massive Brian, out, isn't he? He is a massive out. <laughs> yeah. He gives them that flexibility involving Dugowie. You see Dugowie in the middle. Stevenson would now be down the other end and causing havoc and vice versa. Here's Pendlebury, short of the ball, cut off, Prestia. Yeah. Brilliant 35 possessions tonight for Dion Prestia. Eight clearances with that 2 BT. Yep. Hold there, Steele. The human meatball oh. is just really Move it on. puffing up. Play on. <laughs> and putting a nice coating on his ear at the moment. <laughs> Dion Prestia. Dad, Ozzy, would be very happy. There's a little bit of gout. I reckon that's all gone away now. It's crisp. Neat little ball to Barco. Thanks for that information. <laughs> well, he's got this to think about. His son playing great footy. There's Pendlebury over the top to Trelaw. Crisp kick inside to the advantage of Crocker. And he'll line up directly in front, 25 metres out, as the president and family are on the move. Just dissecting it. Just uh, moment by moment, moment. <laughs> Just saying this is what we need to cover off. <laughs> bit of coaching for bit. They're good looking boys, his sons, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> I wonder whether he's saying 64 days to the grand final. I hope we can be here. Crocker. And 
and sent them down the stairwell. <laughs> See that? That, that said it all. He's off. <laughs> What an impact he's had on this football club, eh? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Extraordinary. He really has. So, Chol gets himself stack to Baker. Oh, clever by Rioli. He was sort of pushed away for a while, Rioli. Go back and do some hard work in the reserves, and back he's come. It's going to be a hard team to break into. BT at the beginning of the night talked about the emergencies season. You know, at yep. the depth, and we know Caddy's there in Anchor. They're going to be, it's going to be hard to get into. And that's why the hunger right till the end is, is there. Hold in, Collingwood. So many Hobbs. different players. Baker, Chole, Lynch, Stack, Bolton, and then the guys in the in the VFL. Yeah, you've got McIntosh, Butler, Butler. Garthwaite, who they've found. Caddy. Caddy. And Curvis. Oh, they're, they're really brewing up to a strong group again at the right time of the year. The, the real competition is those small forward spots. So they're all hungry because you've got, you've got Butler back. They've all spent a little bit of time in the twos this year. So they're hungry each week. They know they can go out because there's five or six guys fighting for four spots. Higgins, the only one they're really missing out for the year. Yeah, to be full for him. It was in this round last year that he kicked the goal of the year against uh, the Pies, you know, the young fella, right? There's another young fella out there who only takes the mark that has captured our imagination, and it's this man, Sydney Stack. And I don't think we've had a more interesting rising star. I mean, there are so many that have put their hand up. And this, I think if he has a big month coming forward and with Richmond's high profile and what he does, he's not out of it. I think he could still win it. Uh, he's certainly one of the, the more exciting candidates to win it. Walsh has been unbelievably consistent. He has. For a first-year player. And, and he'd win nine and a half out of ten and probably will get the job done. And no one would argue with that. But Stack has been exhilarating, hasn't he? Well, his jumping number is currently the margin unless Pendlebury scores here, and he does. He's second. So back to 38-point margin. Skipper. As I mentioned before, will play his 300th of week one of the finals if he doesn't have any mishaps from here on. If they make it. And if they make it. Well, they should make it. <laughs> I, reckon, I, I don't know. Maybe think about, have they salvaged something from the wreck tonight? I mean, it could have been a shipwreck that could not have been fixed by the finals. Have they done enough to salvage anything? What do you reckon? Have they got anything out of this game, Colin? What I mean, we're looking at a month where you've got to get into September with some momentum. Look, they've played a very, very good football team. Um, I'm not, well, they're certainly not in form for mine. I mean, we know that they beat West Coast a couple of weeks ago. That was off the back of one really good quarter in the last. So, still out of form for me. With Hi, Collingwood. With the key players to come back. That's, that's their hope for me. There's there, still a yeah. month to go, and then there's the week off before finals that everybody gets. You add Taylor Adams and Darcy Moore to the balance of this team, and then Stevenson back from that suspension. And they can recapture something out of the remainder of these players. Then, yeah, they're, they're a massive threat in September still. So, Cox to show me. So, you have not written them off as a premiership chance? No, not with those key players back in. They change everything, the balance of the team. And what about you, Wayne? Do you uh, give them I, a genuine premiership chance? I, I agree. I agree with Lingy. I think they get a, a few of those players back and they... I mean, form's a wonderful thing. That's a that's a pretty good list. I mean, Lang Adams, not Ace, coming back. Beams, Langdon, Dunn's not. I don't think more... Reed, well, he's very doubtful, and Stevenson obviously at the end. So it's a pretty core cool group to come back in. But they don't just come back in and you find your form either. That's true. They have to play together. So Maine inside, Elliott in front, Grundy there as well. But it's going to be a big dent in confidence for the Pies and a massive, massive list if for the Tigers as Majacek will get a late one. And the other part of that, BT, is the long-termers. The long-termers, the ones that have been out for a while, you can't bring them all back in at the same time, Lingy. You've got to, you've got to sprinkle them through. Yeah. Yeah. 78,722 
here tonight. Majacek has won. And this will be the last goal of the game. Gets his second. Majacek. In the end, a 32-point loss. It will be which is just a little bit more respectable on the scoreboard. And you at one stage, Bruce, were talking about the percentage yeah. I, issue, and they've just tidied that up have. a little. I, I think they're flattered by that score in the end, yes. I, I, don't you? Yeah, absolutely, 100%. It's a flattering scoreboard. Yep. They've only had 100 points kicked against them once this year, and that was last week, so once this season, so almost there tonight, but it's been a dominant Richmond. <laughs> that's, the, that's the only... Bad news story there, Cochin, and I don't think it's that bad, but the fact he's not going to play next week, as Neil Baum said to us, at half-time is not great news. So Lynch there, Preston and Cochin, because Cochin's going to have a wonderful weekend, we believe, so good luck to Trent and to Brook. Might be rainy and wet, but I reckon they're enjoying this more than the Gold Coast. <laughs> I think so. It was a big win. They hammered Collingwood when it counted most. Early, the rain falling. Richmond making their move, aren't they? They're into the top four for only the second time this year.